Monday night football, two games tonight, guys. We've got the Jags and Bills and the Bengals taking on the Commanders. This is Props and Parlays today. Of course, I am Andrew McGinnis. Unfortunately, no Andy Lang with us today, but he'll be back with us next Monday, I do believe. Uh, you guys can always find his plays over at wagertalk.com as well. Uh, same for myself. But guys, uh, it's going to be a shorter show uh, for today. Usually on uh, Mondays, Andy and I go for you know half an hour plus. I've got some picks, uh, rushing props, receiving props, quarterback props in both games to go over. So I hope you guys enjoy. We'll do the same thing. We'll kind of bring over the betting screen and kind of look at some of these props. But I really hope you guys enjoy this. We'll try and blast through really quick, give some props, give some picks, and uh, hopefully can have a winning night. Again, guys, you can find all my best bets and favorite picks uh, over at wagertalk.com. But let's not waste any time. I do have some picks for you. And I'll tell you what, guys, I'm excited for the fact that we have two games on Monday. I don't know about you guys. I like the fact that two games on Monday... Uh, it's exciting and it's great uh, from a prop betting perspective. Okay, guys, let's not waste any time. Let's start off with um, pass props, pass completion props, or some of these quarterback props here. Taking a look at them down here. Overall, guys, we'll start with this and we'll say that um, Jacksonville, their passing defense has not looked good to start off this season whatsoever. Uh, and they haven't really played teams. Well, I guess one of their teams, at least that they've played, hasn't exactly been lighting the scoreboard up. I'm talking about Cleveland. So, I mean, last week, a little bit different uh, for this Jags team. Now they got to play Josh Allen uh, and the Bills here. But take a look at the numbers here, guys. We have uh, passing yard numbers, 232 and a half for Josh Allen, 221 uh, for Trevor Lawrence. Touchdowns over one and a half for both, of course, but the plus 145 number uh, is kind of nice. So I've got a couple plays here for the passing props in this opening game, guys. And I'm going to look at Josh Allen, his completion number over 20 and a half. It's 0-2 to start off this season, guys, but... Um, it is uh five and one uh, five and two uh his last seven games so you know prior to the the, the slow start he's had he, he's a pass happy guy and you know with his completions I think with the guys that they have right now whether it be Shakir whether it be Kincaid whether it be Coleman uh, whoever he's going to they have a really good mix and a good blend of short passes long passes different routes that they're running um and I think that this is the game compared to some of the previous opponents the Bills have gone against, this is the game that they're going to kind of be pass happy, but not necessarily every play is going to be a deep ball downfield. It just means they're going to be passing the ball quite a bit. So um, we'll get into more of the receiving guys moving forward, but over 20 and a half completions for Josh Allen was one prop that I was looking at. Um, and then here's one, guys, I, I just mentioned, you can see on your screen right now, the plus 145. We're going to go ahead and lock in Trevor Lawrence over one and a half passing touchdowns at plus 145. Guys, you got to love that price you're seeing on the over there. Minus 190 is the under. And look, I get it. They've got running backs that will punch it in. If they're on the goal line, they'll punch it in. They'll steal the passing touchdown from Trevor Lawrence and from our bet. But one handicap I have with this is that whether or not they're big plays or not, we're going to see kind of... Trevor Lawrence tried to get more established this game. I feel like his first few starts so far, it's been pretty much either, you know, a huge play or nothing. And they really want to gain momentum, build some chemistry with these receivers, get going. Obviously, it's still so early in the season, but the desperation factor is there. What I kind of vision with this over one and a half prop guys is that we probably have, you know, one 30 plus yard touchdown and then one shorter yardage touchdown where they're in the red zone and uh and they throw the ball into the end zone to catch this ticket at plus 145 a lot of people say about these primetime games going under this bills uh, and jags game in particular could go under the total so i'm not saying that we're going to see a ton of points on both sides uh but i do think that in order to beat a team like this bills team you got to put points on the board i think this is an opportunity for the jags to show up and they they actually have played well in the past against this team um, I, I'm going to go ahead and lock in over one and a half at this plus 145 price. Uh, you really do have to like it here. And uh, those are two props that I like as far as the passing uh, for these two quarterbacks. Okay, guys, keeping things moving. Uh, again, if you're liking the video, please hit the like button and comment below what you are betting. 
I know we usually say, hey, you know, don't feel pressure to give us a bet. I want to know what you guys are betting tonight. So between both these games, let me know uh, some bets that you guys are interested in. Okay, uh, rushing props. Okay, guys, we've got two that I like here. And yes, we're going back with Josh Allen. Look, so I'm a guy that has over 20 and a half pass completions for Josh Allen. So why would I take, why would I take his rushing number? Well, he has absolutely soared over this number in the past. You know, last week, not much out of him. But prior to that, five straight games, he went over 32 and a half rushing yards. To me, this is an opportunity where they're going to have the uh, the Jags exposed uh, through the air. And it's going to open things up for him to run the ball. And, you know, Josh Allen is not scared to use his legs. If he sees an opportunity, if he sees a window, he will go ahead and take that space and capitalize on it and get that first down. But a lot of times for him, guys, with a number like 32 and a half, I'm telling you, you only need a handful of rushing attempts for him to get that. Because usually when he does take off, he's good for one big run uh, each game. So I do think he can get that. And with that being said... If I like Josh Allen over on his rushing yard prop and I like Josh Allen over on his completions prop, guys, well, that probably means that I like James Cook under on his rushing yards. And I do under 63 and a half for uh, James Cook, who's who's been phenomenal. He's been good in both the rushing and receiving game. Would not be shocked to see him uh, make some catches, get involved in the receiving game, kind of some dink and dunk stuff out of there to help me get that completions prop cashed. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the under on him. I think that this is kind of one of those games where you want to look towards a little bit lower numbers, but you want to fade that number. And James Cook has been impressing a lot of people over the first two weeks, guys. So maybe this is an opportunity to kind of go the other way, you know, and take the under 63 and a half uh, for potentially a game we could see the Bills being quite um, pass happy. All right, that's it for the rushing yards. Gotta say, it feels weird doing this without Andy, guys, without going back and forth, without exchanging opinions, without seeing what he thinks um, about some of these. But receiving yard uh, props here, receiving props as we scroll down again, no affiliation with any books. We're just using this one here uh, to kind of go through things. So, so many options to look at here, guys. Brian Thomas Jr., Curtis Samuel, Dalton Kincaid, Gabe Davis. So for receptions... I actually am interested in looking at Gabe Davis, and I love that plus 120. Because, guys, when you're betting player props, it's really important to realize the odds that you're getting. You know, I know a lot of people love certain player props that are at minus 130. They're at minus 140. They're at certain numbers. But the amount of times, that the, the number of wins you need and the win percentage you need changes drastically when you find yourself playing some of these, you know, highly priced player props versus a guy like Gabe Davis playing his former team and he's plus 120 over three and a half. Uh, I like that one quite a bit. I do think that he gets up and over that number. Um, if we go towards the receiving yards, um, one that I really liked that I mentioned on Wager Talk today was Travis Etienne up and over 20 and a half receiving yards. The Jacksonville Jags coaching staff, they have made it very clear that they want to hold on to the ball a lot more. They want to drive the field a lot more here today, guys. You know, it's been a problem for them. They've been getting off the field too quick. You know, whether it's been their run game not working, whether they find themselves in second or third and long uh, and the passing game's not working for them, they want to establish possession. And, and what do you do with that? Well, the dink and dunk really helps, you know. Um, with Travis Etienne slipping off to the left and they toss him a three or four yard play, and he can do something with it, get them even four, five, six yards. That will help them out an extraordinary amount. Um, so I do think Travis Etienne over 20 and a half is a really good one. Um, and I'll tell you what, guys, a play that I cashed on, uh, I believe in, in week two, was uh, Khalil Shakir over on his number. And his receptions, like he, his receptions is good, but I think this, is, this today is a good number to look at 47 and a half. To the over he's just kind of been that like safety blanket where he catches these over the top uh balls because he's he's not really catching anything too long you know it's like 15 yards at the max uh and he seems to be kind of that guy that josh allen can rely on he's getting a high number of targets he's always available 
Um, and until that number drastically moves, I think we have to continue to to look at Shakir. Over 47 and a half is his number. Um, I, like I said, I, I'm on the under on rushing yards for James Cook. So I do think receiving yards could be the move for him. Dalton Kincaid, I'm kind of interested in looking towards the under. And like I said, guys, love getting the under at these plus money, or even if it's just even money, plus 100, under 37 and a half. Until I see an explosive game out of Kincaid, I'm interested in going towards the under. Curtis Samuel, I, I wouldn't talk anybody off the over in that one, just with how low that number is. And then you look at Brian Thomas Jr. I'll tell you what, guys, I don't want to sound... You know, like I'm just reacting to last week and just a recency bias guy. But after that big catch he had last week, I wouldn't talk anybody looking at the longest reception for uh, Brian Thomas Jr. That one might be a little bit interesting to look at. Uh, the only other one I had in this game to look at uh, for you guys was... Um, which one was it here? It was a special teams prop. Cam Little, uh, under one and a half field goals made for the Jags. I think it kind of speaks for itself, guys. The Jags are five and a half point underdogs. I'm on the over one and a half passing touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence. I think he's going to have to put on a performance. Um, field goals can help you. Don't get me wrong. We've seen a lot of boneheaded coaching decisions uh, to start off this season where teams should have gone for field goals. But I don't think field goals are the answer in this matchup for the Jags to get their first win against the Buffalo Bills. So this one is a little bit juicy. I did say we don't love the juicy props, guys. I understand that. But under one and a half field goals for Little, I think, is a good bet to make um, as far as we're concerned for the special teams props tonight. So that's it for the props uh, on the Bills and Jags game. And guys, remember to comment below what you are betting tonight. I'm interested. Uh, I seriously am curious. I, I love hearing props that everybody likes. So there's so many player prop options out there. Uh, and we really do appreciate you guys being here with us every single Monday on Props and Parlays today. Um, it, it's great. And uh, we love handicapping these primetime games for you guys uh, and going over these big games. Okay, let's make it short and simple. Commanders, Bengals, guys. Uh, another team that's uh, that's desperate, we'll say. This Bengals team, they're not happy right now, just like the Jags weren't happy. And I'm not saying that a team like the Commanders should be very happy right now. But let's just put it this way, guys. This is a Commanders team that last year, they were bottom five in every statistical pass defense category. Okay, there, there's not much really changing this year, I think, as far as their secondary is concerned. They rank number 24 in passing yards allowed currently uh, in this season. They started the year off by getting absolutely cooked by the Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield. Uh, Baker passed all over them. And then, well, what happened last week? They got to play against Daniel Jones. Okay, you're not playing against Daniel Jones. You're playing against uh, Joe Burrow, who has a chip on his shoulder, who's not happy right now going into this game. So I wouldn't talk anybody off playing Joe Burrow props uh, right now. And I know that this is probably going to be a popular one, a popular play that people want to look at. Uh, when you see 261 and a half, you see 196 and a half on the other side. You know, I think that when you look at Joe Burrow, people are going to say, well, if they're expected to be up by so many points, then how is he going to go over this number, right? And, and my answer to people is this. Well, how are they going to be up by so many points if he doesn't go over this number, right? If he's if they're minus seven, minus seven and a half favorites, they have to get over this number by doing something. They have to get over this number by their quarterback making plays, by the receivers making plays. Unless it's all punt returns, kickoff returns, and special teams, Joe Burrow is getting over this number. This is a game that he's been waiting for. I think this is a game that he'll have plenty of success in. So over 261 and a half. I think this is a game that uh, the Bengals show up in. And uh, you've got a Washington team coming off a game against the Giants. And then now they got to play a really, really pissed off Bengals team, for lack of better words here, guys. Uh, so I think that's the way to go. Um, and then here's what we're going to look at for Jaden Daniels. We're going to look at pass attempts and, you know, a lot of these pass completions, pass attempt props are what I look at for teams that I expect to lose. And, you know, they might not be on the field a ton to start the games. I do think that we're going to see the Bengals drive the field. 
um, utilize their run game. But like I said, Joe Burrow with the passing yards, they could have a couple big plays that they score, send Jaden Daniels back out on the field there. And the best part about pass attempts, guys, every time he throws the ball and a receiver bobbles it, doesn't catch it, drops it, it still marks as one for you. It's one attempt, right? You need to get up and over 28 and a half uh, the number there you see is 33 and a half for Joe Burrow. Honestly, even though I like the over on passing yards, I wouldn't be shocked to see that one go under. I think 28 and a half over for Jaden Daniels is the best way to go uh, if you're looking for a player prop to get involved in um, on the Washington Commanders as far as their quarterback uh, situation is concerned. Let's take a look at the rushing props for the Commanders and the Bengals here. Um, when you take a look at the numbers, you got Eckler, you've got Robinson, uh, Dan, of course, Burrow and Daniels themselves, Moss. Um, we're going to go up and over 52 and a half uh, for Zach Moss. And as far as Brian Robbins Jr. gets concerned, to me, I think that number is a little bit too high. So we're going to go under 55 and a half at that plus 100 mark. I do like that one quite a bit. And Jaden Daniels, guys, we're going to go under for him. I know people might think, you know, the athletic ability that he has, the pressure that he might face from Cincy. Um, you know, he's going to have to be scrambling. But I think that when you're down, scrambling for a handful of yards is not enough. It's not going to be enough. They're going to have to pass the ball. He can't be a runner for them. When he steps back, he is planning on throwing the ball. And even if he's facing pressure, I don't think that he's going to be able to um, collectively get up and over 49 and a half. That would mean a lot of successful runs, in my opinion, unless he breaks off for one big one. So we're going to go under on rushing yards for him. Looking at Zach Moss, and we'll take the under on Brian Robinson uh, as well. Um, looking at the receiving guys, we got just one receiving prop that we're going to mention because I do have some client plays uh, in this game. And this is a player prop that I mentioned on Wager Talk today. We've got T. Higgins back in the mix, guys. T. Higgins is back in the mix for the Bengals. And, and again, I mentioned the Commanders. The Commanders being a, a bottom five ranked passing defense last season. They're ranked 24th uh, in passing yards allowed already this year. And again, that's one game against the Giants. So imagine if they played against another decent team besides just the Giants. They played the Bucks and the Giants, of course. Um, T. Higgins, he's back and healthy. They didn't rush him back. This is an opportunity where um, they didn't want to rush uh, a player like this back. Of course, he just got the franchise tag, and then people were saying, you know, of course, he gets the franchise tag, and then now he's injured. Um, but this number, to me, is solid. 45 and a half here. Um, he's averaging 5.4 targets per game in his last 10 games. In prime time, he has showed up, guys. He's got a handful of 100-yard performances in prime time. The commanders offer practically zero pressure towards quarterbacks, so Burrow's going to have all day long to sit in the pocket, to find his targets, to find his spots, and I think T. Higgins uh, is a guy to do that. Uh, he averages, I think, close to like 23, 24 yards per game as his longest reception, so pretty much half of what his yardage is, or more than half, uh, we potentially are expecting him to get in just one catch alone. Uh, so I really like that one quite a bit here. Um, I think he's they're going to get the job done. And honestly, I would look towards Mike Gusecki a little bit at his number at 26 and a half. I think he gets involved uh, catching balls over the top. But the rest of my plays, the rest of my best bets, you guys can find over at wagertalk.com. Really missed having Andy with me here, but I hope you guys got enough player props from me. Let's make some money. Let's cash these tickets, guys. We got back-to-back -back games, multiple games on Monday Night Football, Bengals, Commanders, Jags, Bills, all kinds of quarterback props, all kinds of rushing, all kinds of receiving props, and my best bets, my favorite plays over at wagertalk.com. You guys can use the promo code w, or, uh, AM39, AM39, uh, to get three days for the price of one. That's $39 at wt.buzz slash am also a lot of you guys probably know me for nhl handicapping for nhl hockey 
Well, NHL season's here, guys. I'm researching already. We got picks out for preseason hockey. Um, we have an early bird special up for the NHL. If you guys want all my future write-ups, you want all my preseason props, sides, totals, get it all in that early bird special at my homepage. Best of luck, guys. Please subscribe to Wager Talk TV. Hit the like button on this video and comment to let me know what you are betting on. We'll see you next time right here on Wager Talk TV.